about the puzzle of communication. And finally, we're going to go ahead and have some Q&A as well. Um, our methodology, this is going to be slightly different from some of the other webinars that you might have um, been a part of in the past. We would like for this to be as interactive as possible. So we have some interactive polls. We have some group chat, which we would encourage you to join in as much as possible. And we're going to do some role plays as well. So be prepared um, to join in and um, join in with our facilitator today and engage in some role plays. Um, general rules. I know we have people joining us as we speak, but I'm just going to go over some of the general rules. Um, you might have noticed that your audio is muted and your video is turned off by default, um, but you can change that. We would um, recommend that you keep your audio and video muted because we have a large number of participants in this particular webinar and we'd like to be able to save on much as much bandwidth as possible. Um, but um, when you share, please make sure that you unmute yourself before you start sharing. Um, you can use the chat board to message the moderator, that's me, Luke, um, or the host directly. So use your chat screen. And the most important rule of all, participate. Um, at the end of the day, even though this is a one hour webinar, we'd like for you to take away as much as possible from this session. So we'd love for you to participate as much as possible. All right. Great. Now, let me go ahead and introduce our coach for the day. Um, it is our pleasure to introduce to you Vikas. He's a certified inner communication coach, certified NLP coach, and with over 17 years of experience in conducting training sessions and coaching sessions, I can say across the globe, um, we have the pleasure of Vikas joining us today and walking us through dealing with conflict in the virtual environment. So Vikas, uh, without any further ado, over to you. All right. Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? I hope everyone is doing great. And I'd like to say welcome to this virtual session on managing conflict in a virtual environment. It is my pleasure to facilitate this session. And it is such an honor to have so many of you join us. We have so much gratitude for each and every one of you being here. And we want to make sure that by the end of this session, you have at least one key takeaway that you can use in real time scenarios that you face in virtual settings. All right. So uh, I'm not going to go into detailed uh, introductions. Uh, Luke has done a wonderful job of that, but we're going to go straight in. We're going to go straight in and ask you some questions. We're going to be asking you three questions today. Remember, Luke said it's interactive, so we would like you to type your responses on the chat screen. I will read out each question, and then you type your responses on the chat screen, please. So we now move to the questions. Question number one. Some months, like October, have 31 days. Only February has precisely 28, except in a leap year, how many months have 30 days? You have 10 seconds to answer. Go ahead, put down your responses. Okay, okay. I see a few responses coming in. I see a few responses coming in. Okay, next question. Next question. All right. Divide. 50 by one third and add seven, what's the answer? Since there's some math involved, I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to do this, right? Divide 50 by one third and add seven, what's the answer? Okay, I see some answers coming in. Great, uh, we see 22, 23, 157, 23, 24, 23. Okay, next question, final question. We're gonna go straight into it. All right, this one you'll only get 10 seconds for. How many times can you subtract the number five from 25? How many times can you subtract the number five from 25? You have five seconds remaining. Three, two, one, and time. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, everybody. I see a lot of people have been very interactive. Thank you so much for your responses on the chat screen over here. Great, great work, everyone. Now, let's look at the answers. The first question, some months like October have 31 days, only February has precisely 28, except in a leap year, how many months have 30 days? Now, a lot of you wrote responses like four or five or six, and a majority of you wrote the right answer, and the right answer is 
11 months because other than February, right? Every other month has 30 days. All right, that was a little bit tricky, but here we go to the next one. Divide 50 by one third and add seven. What is the answer? So I saw a multitude of answers here. Some of you said 22, some of you 23.66 or 23.67. Some of you said 157. So what's the answer? Go ahead. Let's show them the answer. It's 157. So for those of us who were writing the answer as 157, well done, pat on your back. For those of you who wrote other answers, most probably what you did was to take 50 and divide it by three, right? Which will give you something like 16.67. And if you added seven, you'd get 23.67, right? If you did that, unfortunately, that wasn't the right answer, or at least that wasn't the answer that we were looking for. Uh, it was 157 because when you do 50 divided by one by three, then three goes into the numerator and you multiply 50 by three, which is 150, and then you add seven, which gives you 157. The last question, how many times can you subtract five from 25? Okay, so I saw a multitude of answers here. Some of you said five, some of you said four. I got so many different responses, but the answer is, Luke, yes, there you go, only once. Because once you subtract five from 25, 25 becomes 20. And then every time you're subtracting five, you're only doing it from 20 or 15. You're not subtracting five from 25 anymore. <laughs> yes, thank you, Navya. That was sneaky of us. Um, but why did we do this exercise, right? I'd like you to type your responses on the chat screen. What caused us to make these errors? Okay, type your response, check your responses. As someone said they couldn't even get one right answer. Don't worry about it. The intent was not to get accuracy. Yeah, some of you are typing time was a factor. Some of you said alertness. Some of you said um, we were in a rush, our judgment. Right, competitiveness over confidence. <laughs> yeah, uh, lack of details. Yeah, someone said lack of details, right? Jumping in to respond, assumptions. Very, very nice. So most of us have written really what came to our mind. Yes, a lot of us have made certain assumptions. And when we are under the paucity of time, these assumptions actually guide our thinking, right? And it was, a, and do we not all have paucity of time, especially when you're working from home nowadays and you're coordinating so many things? And our mind sometimes pays attention to what we want to pay attention to, right? And today's session is really about how do you pay attention to that most important thing that's necessary to prevent conflict? And we call that the power of context. How do we understand the context of the other person when we are engaged in virtual interactions? Right? And if we can understand the context from which that they are coming from, it, forget managing conflict, it actually prevents conflict from even happening. Right? So how do we do this? Well, that's what we're going to be exploring in a little bit more detail. Um, but what we first want to do is understand your context, right? We're going to start with a little poll, and we want to ask you this question. What are some of the challenges of working in virtual teams? So, Luke, you can make the poll live right now. So, on your screen, you should be seeing a poll question come up, all right? What are, the, what are some of the challenges you face when working in virtual teams? Uh, competitiveness, clash in personalities, poor communication, conflicting goals, differences in opinion, right? So choose one of these options that you feel most resonates with you. Uh, you can choose more than one option if necessary. So go ahead, choose an option and submit. I'll give you another 30 seconds to do so, and then we'll see what the results of the poll are. Okay, take 30 seconds, choose the answer that you think most resonates with you. Choose the answer that most resonates with you. Okay, I'll give you another 10 seconds. All right, I'm hoping all of you can see the poll on your screen. If you cannot, make sure you type in the chat box saying no, but just choose the response that most fits your challenges of working in virtual teams. 
another five more seconds to send in your responses. Three, two, and one. So Luke, we can close the poll right now. And hopefully we can publish the results as they come out. So give us a few seconds as we're doing that. All right. Wow. I think the, the, the results are pretty evident, aren't they? Poor communication. 50% of the time, all of us are saying poor communication is the major challenge that we're facing when working in virtual teams. Uh, difference in opinion is, about, is the second highest there, about 22% of the time. And conflicting goals, clashes in personalities and competitiveness, about 9% each. Okay, so I think we have a clear answer over here. Most of us are saying poor communication is the biggest challenge we have when working in virtual teams. Okay, well, if that's what you're facing as a challenge, that's exactly what we're looking to address today. Now, before we start off, let's first define what is conflict. So type out your responses in the chat stream. What is your perception of conflict? Uh, kind request for everyone, if you can please mute your audio right now because I'm hearing some background noise. Thank you very much. Uh, what is conflict? So I'm hearing some opinions here. Uh, difference of opinion, clash of opinion, difference of opinion. Yes, a lot of you are saying difference of opinion. Yes, I can see that on the chat stream. Okay, interesting, interesting. Most of you are saying it's difference of opinion, not thinking in a broad way, says Karthik. Um, disagreements, that's Sanjeev. Um, disagreements, differences of opinion. All right, great, I'll give you another five more seconds. A difference in perception, yeah, that's an interesting one, thank you. Not thinking as a team, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, someone would put even the word ego in there from Prakash, absolutely, sometimes that can come in the way, misunderstandings. So three, two, and one. Okay. So thank you very much for those responses. Some amazing responses. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing your responses to that question. Now, I'm not going to go in with a dictionary definition of what conflict is. I'm just going to give you my perception of what conflict is. I often see it as an energy. Right? So it's an energy that builds up with when individuals or groups of people pursue incompatible goals in their drive to meet their needs and their interests. Okay. So that's a one sentence definition, but I'd just like to give you my single take on this, right? Conflict is like an energy, like any other energy in the world. Think of it as nuclear energy, right? What happens when you use nuclear energy? You can use it to destroy a city or you can use it to power a city. Right? And that's what conflict is. It's an energy that if channeled correctly can be used in the most constructive ways. And the key to that really is exactly what all of you said, is the way you communicate during that conflict that allows us to use it as something that powers equations. Like some of you said, conflict is about difference of opinion. Awesome, because difference of opinion is good, right? If you're married, you already know that. If differences of opinion give us learning. If you work in collaborative teams, you already know that, because in teams as well, differences of opinion is what allows us to get the best idea for so that's what conflict we believe is. So it's not a bad thing. We just learn to need to learn to know how to use it effectively. So how do we do that? Well, let's move forward here and look at how do we bring this in into real time scenarios. Right? What, uh, what, what, what we? Uh, yeah, someone said they like the analogy to nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Thank you very much, Navya. Yeah. Uh, let's actually try and make this more practical now. We are in a virtual session. Our intent right now is to get this conflict management scenario as close, as close to you as possible, right? And we have, as of now, I've been looking at it, 149 participants on this webinar, right? So we're not gonna be able to get everybody to do simulations as much as we would like to in our real-time training sessions, some of which some of you have been part of. But we're gonna do one small simulation to kind of start off with. And I'm gonna request Luke to support me with this. Um, so what's going to happen now is we're going to take a situation and here's the situation. We're going to have a virtual meeting scenario where I'm a stakeholder and Luke, the moderator of our uh, session today is going to be another stakeholder. We're from two departments. He's from department A 
and I am from department B. All right, so let's assume we're on this virtual call with each other. Luke, so you can unmute and put your video on. Right, and we're gonna have a situation where I, as a stakeholder, I'm gonna be making a demand of him. Yeah, I'm gonna be making a demand of him. So let's see how this goes. Luke, hey, good morning. How are you doing, Luke? Good, because. Okay. Good um, so we need something and we need something really quickly. We need your team, team A, to send all their deliverables to us by 6 p.m. today, okay? So we need your deliverables by 6 p.m. today. Please go out right now, make that happen. Okay, I, I hope you're joking with us because uh, 6 p.m. today is definitely not possible. We have a lot of things that my team is working on right now. Come on, man, I don't wanna hear what's not possible. I just want you to make it possible, 6 p.m. today, please. Well, why does it seem like you're always pressurizing me to do this at the last minute, Because I mean, you could have come to me a lot earlier. Why is it that you're bringing hey, this? Come on, man. I don't want to hear your problems right now, okay? We're all under pressure, right? I'm not pressurizing because I want to. That's because of the situation sure. we're well, in. I, I so get, get the job done. You know, we're all under pressure. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. So I don't yeah, think... Yeah, you're supposed to help me, my friend. This is not helping. Come on, 6 p.m. today. Can you get it done? Well, you're just, you're not even listening to me, Because You're just pushing me to do what <sighs> you on, want man. to get done. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, everybody, we'll pause here and we're gonna ask you a question. You've been listening to this interaction between two people from two different departments, right? I'd like to ask you this. Uh, have you seen people get into conflict in virtual environments over the last, especially over the last few weeks since most of us have been working from home and in the lockdown situation, right? So type your response in the chat screen. Yes, a lot of you are saying yes, 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 I heard just one no. Good for you, whoever said no. Thank you very much. But most of you are saying yes. Personally, I have seen this as well, right? Even my own team. Um, someone said absolutely, yeah. So what I would like you to not, now tell me, like on the chat stream, in this interaction between Luke and me, what caused the conflict? What caused the conflict, right? So type your responses. Somebody said tone, someone said poor listening, someone said no empathy, time, yeah, not listening, not listening, alignment, not listening, tone, uh, communication, uh, the tone, the intent, okay, the goal, not listening, priorities, okay, demanding, tone. Okay, so I think overwhelming majority is really around the tone and the communication and the not understanding. Um, all right. All right. All right. Great. So a lot of you are talking about the tone. Absolutely. Right. Um, the tone of voice here was a challenge. But let's go a little deeper. Um, what caused that tone of voice? Right? I think it's in the mind, isn't it? The mindset with which each of us are approaching that conversation. If the mind is, is in the right space, the tone changes, the nature of the demand changes, the level of authority changes. Um, and yes, time is the same for everybody. Pressure is the same for everybody. The urgency is the same for everyone, right? But what is the mindset with which we approach each of these conversations? So what we would like for you to take away from today is what's coming up next. So I need your attention for the next few moments, okay? This framework for conflict management is what we would like you to apply in order to bridge these gaps. And this framework is CQA. Connect, question, assert. All right, connect, question, assert. A simple three-step process that if we walk in with this mindset into all of our interactions, be it virtual or face-to-face, -face, whenever that happens, we are going to be so much more impactful. And I know this because over the years and years of coaching people, some of you who are on this webinar, and thank you for being here, um, training uh, you know, multiple people across, across India, across the globe, right? Uh, we have seen this work. So let's go in to the C, Q, and A, one by one. So let's start with number one, connect. I love this quote from Stephen Covey, the author of The Seven Habits, Highly Effective People. Uh, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. I think he couldn't have said it better, right? A lot of you are already saying, correct, absolutely, yeah. If, if this resonates with you, type a yes on your chat screen. If this resonates with you, type yes, absolutely. A lot of you are saying yes. And we've all been part of situations, haven't we, 
where we know that the other party is just listening with the intent to respond to us, right? And you know what? The truth is, I have been in that scenario as well. I have been in conversations where I have been listening with the intent to reply and not with the intent to understand. And when we join with that mindset, we're really trying to poke holes in the other person's argument, trying to convince them to do what we want them to do. Right? And truth be told, that's exactly what Luke and I were demonstrating to you earlier. Most of you said listening was a major challenge. Yes, that's because we were listening with the intent to reply, not with the intent to understand. Um, but here's the interesting part, right? Uh, why do we get into this mode where we are listening to reply? And let's face it, most of us have done that, whether it's at, uh, at work or at home, right? And nowadays with working from home, the lines between home and work are getting blurred. Um, so most of us have done that. And what causes us to do that? Well, it's science, really. And I love science. And here's a bit of neuroscience that I'm going to be sharing with you shortly. Uh, there is this part of your brain that gets triggered whenever you face a threat. I won't go into, well, I won't go into all of the details you're seeing on screen. Uh, if you would like to, we can do a more detailed session for your organization where you go into a lot of the brain science here. But the neuroscience says that little red dot you see on the screen, it's called the amygdala, right? A lot of you might have heard of it. For those of you who have not, it's simply that part of your brain that allows you to react to situations. Here's a simple scenario. Let me say that I take my fist, come straight at your face. What are you going to do? Move away, right? Avoid the blow. What will you do next? Would you punch back? Would you run away? Well, if I was six foot six and had muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you probably would run away. Um, some of you may not. Uh, or we may just freeze. Right? We just go blank in our minds. Why does that happen? Well, that's because the amygdala senses a threat. It senses that fist coming at you and sends this rush of chemicals out into your body to give you the energy to either punch back or run away. And if it doesn't know what to do, it might just freeze. Right? So it's giving you this energy. Now, this energy is great is if, you're, if you're in a survival situation. But in today's world, right, when you're working from home, most of us are staying safe. But we're not in a survival situation when we're working from home. Right? But what's happening around us can be quite challenging. Right? What's happening around us is we're seeing people go into hospitals. We're seeing people not able to step out to buy groceries. Or if you are, then you go out once a week or twice a week. And if you do, then you're distancing yourself from others in that line. Rightfully so. But these are the makings of a survival situation. Your brain's really switched on now, right? The news is bombarding you with information. Your amygdala is constantly getting triggered. And when your colleague gets on a call and says, we need that information right now, your amygdala doesn't know the difference between the colleague's demand and a fist coming at you. Right? So it just reacts the same way. And worse, what it does, it, it shuts down other parts of your brain. That blue portion you're seeing over there, the neocortex, that's where most of your logical thinking happens. And here's the beauty. That's where your empathy comes from. Your empathy center is in your neocortex, right? And that's one of the reasons why in conflict, when we sense a threat, we tend to react and we don't show that empathy. We don't try and understand context. So how do you understand context? That's right. Some of you have said we start defending ourselves under threat. You're absolutely right. So how do you move out of this reactive defensive mode and move into a more logical mode, move into a more empathetic mode to understand the context of your person? And the answer to that is by asking questions, right? The way to trigger your neocortex is to put out questions to others. As Eugene Ionesco beautifully said, it is not the answer that enlightens, but the question itself. The act of asking the question tells the other person, right? Tells the other person that you are willing to hear their opinion. And Rajesh said it beautifully here, uh, sorry, Rajesh, I used a short name for you, but he said it beautifully. Even the tone or the quality of the question matters. Absolutely, I agree with you. The tone of the question is just as equally important. And the quality here refers to asking a question that you ask because you want to understand, as Stephen Covey said. 
not because you want to find faults with what the other person's argument is. If you ask questions from that person, from that perspective, you will just trigger the person's amygdala, right? Uh, so what you want to do is invite the other person into a collaborative conversation. It's easier said than done. And the key to that is asking that question, right? So here we are. So the first two steps, you want to connect. You want to really show that empathy, right? For that, you have to stay in your neocortex. Your mindset should be, I'm here to understand, right? Second, ask a question that allows this individual to explain their perspective. It doesn't mean you have to agree with their perspective all the time, people. I'm not saying you have to agree. However, we need to understand. Even if you're going to disagree, first understand. It'll make them feel heard. And once you connect, and once you question, then you move into step three, which is to assert. Now, a lot of you might have heard of what assertiveness is. I'm going to ask a quick question in the chat screen. What is assertiveness? Whatever comes to your mind, put it on the chat screen. What is assertiveness? Right? Yes, I see that someone's saying, yes, how you ask a question matters. Yes, assertiveness. Someone says being able to speak your mind. Well done, Rashmi, absolutely right. Uh, being firm, says Shafali, being proactive. Yes, being firm is, a, is definitely a part of assertiveness. Right, Sanjeev says sticking to our views. Yeah, being firm. Affirmative, yes. Uh, being able to say what is right and to be able to stand on it. Deepthi says that, absolutely. Uh, stand up, stand up for your right or stand up for what you believe in is what Jignesh, is saying, I assume, is saying. Yes, Neville says say something that you believe in, absolutely. So all of you have kind of captured what your perspectives are. Now, I would agree with most of what you've written. In my words, assertiveness is this behavior pattern that's neither aggressive nor submissive. I like to summarize in two words, firm yet polite. Firm yet polite. That's how I see assertiveness. And what we would like to share with you is a little method, a forced process that you can use in order to sound assertive when you are in real time interactions with people, especially in virtual environments, this becomes so much more important. So look, we will show them the four step process right now that we have used over the years, 17 years. I've been using this. Um, very simply put, it says, I understand. However, therefore, is that okay with you? Right? Show it. I understand to demonstrate your understanding of the other person's issue or situation. However, to express your opinion, your ideas, or your feelings, or what, what your situation is, therefore, to indicate that you can come to a conclusion right now, or an alternative action right now, and is that okay with you to gain buy-in and to gain confirmation? So let's see how this works, right? Um, let me give you an example. In the scenario that Luke and I had, how could I have been assertive using this force of process? So if I had said to Luke, hey, Luke, I understand that you are working on multiple priorities right now and that you are under a lot of pressure. However, the situation that I'm facing right now is one where we need to get back to our client as early as 12 p.m. in the afternoon tomorrow. And if you guys don't send your work to us by 6 p.m. today, we do not have the time to be able to work on it ourselves. Hence, what? I would like to suggest is that if you can reprioritize a request and if there is someone you need to speak to, if you need me to speak to them, I can try and speak to them to help reprioritize what you're doing. Um, if, if you need some information from us, we can do that as well. And then let's see how we can reprioritize so that you can give us our deliverable device, deliverables by 6 p.m. today. Is that okay with you? This is how I would use the Forster process as a stakeholder from Department B talking to my colleague in Department A. Now, yes, this is using the Forster process. The first step is about the empathy and also the tone of voice. Like most of you said, that has to change, right? The mindset changes, the tone changes, the process changes. But remember, it's C Q A. The A comes at the end. The most common mistake I see most people making is they start with asserting. They start with asserting, okay? So it's C, Q, and then A. First, connect. Go in with the mindset of empathy. Two, question. Ask questions to understand their context. And third, assert. I understand. However, therefore, is that all right with you? Wait, that's the takeaway that we'd like you to have from today. That's something we'd like you to put in practice in situations where you are facing real-time or virtual conflict. Now, um, 
as a training organization, we believe that it's not just our responsibility to give you a concept or give you the knowledge of it. We also have to kind of work like a driving instructor at times, right? If you're learning to drive a vehicle, it's not enough if you just know A, B, C, accelerator, brake, and clutch. You need to be able to take a little, you know, uh, simulation in that vehicle that you're trying to learn to drive. And so what we're hoping to do, since we're on a limited time right now, we're gonna do one quick simulation of how you apply this. And here's an opportunity for anyone here who wants to participate, right? We're going to open this up. I'm going to be stakeholder from department B, and we're going to invite anyone who's willing to take this opportunity to play the role, the role that Luke played earlier from department A, to be able to deal with me. And what we're looking for you doing is to try using the CQ&A, the connect, the question, and the search. So if you are willing to try, and unmute yourself on audio and share your video and interact with me, I would be more than happy to have a role play simulation done and the rest of us give you live feedback. So the benefit is that you get some live feedback. How do you do this? If you would like to participate, all you have to do is look at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a section called participants. Click on that, right? Another box opens up and you'll see a small button on the bottom right corner that says raise hand. If you want to participate, just raise your hand, right? And we will bring you in. If we have more than one person uh, raising their hands, then we might just randomly choose, right? So if you want to participate, you can raise your hand to get some live feedback. All right. All right, I'm just checking. Keep it open. All right, Navya. Navya has raised her hand. That's the first person's hand that I see. I'll go up. So awesome, Navya. We'll invite you in, Navya. You can lower your hand right now, and we're going to invite you in. Um, so you can unmute your audio and uh, kind of start your video. Great, Navya. Okay, so let's see. Hi. Hi there, Navya. Wonderful Hi. to see you today. Thank you for participating. Thank All you right. for inviting. Yeah, you are welcome. Wonderful. Thank you for being the brave one to join in. So before we go ahead, Navya, I'm going to request your permission. At the end of the simulation, I'm going to be requesting for everybody else on this live webinar uh, to give some feedback in terms of what you did well and what you could do differently. Would you be comfortable with that? Yeah. Great. Thank you. So everyone, wait till the end of the simulation and put your responses in the chat screen. I will trigger you with questions. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So Navya, I'm going to be department B, you're going to be department A, and I am going to be coming to you with the same kind of request that I came to loop with. So we'll start in three, two, one. Hey Navya, department A, thank you so much for joining the call. Um, what I wanted to say is we need your deliverables by 6 p.m. today. So please ensure come hell or high water that your team is giving your deliverables to us by 6 p.m. today. Is that okay? Uh, hi, Vikas. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to me. Um, I understand that there is a deadline on these deliverables. However, given the time frame that we have available, uh, probably not uh, uh, possible to meet all the deliverables. No, no, no. We don't have, we don't have we, the uh, option of that answer, uh, Navya, in terms of not possible. We'll have to make it possible. So please, can you please do whatever it takes uh, talk to whoever you need to. 6 p.m. today, we need those deliverables. I understand. Um, however, given the time frame, can we discuss uh, maybe a breaking down of the deliverables or uh, if people are required to stay over time, how are we going to manage that? Well, can that I'll allow you to handle, okay? Breaking down deliverables, uh, we'll see what we can do. But can you please make sure your team is working on this on top priority and get this gets us out by 6 p.m. today. I understand the concern with that. I understand that it's a top priority, and I assure you that my I completely understand how important this is, and I will have the team working on this. But however, I'm just a little concerned about how much you need delivered and the time that I have available. All right. So we'll pause there, Navya. We... Yeah. Shall we pause there? Yeah. You were gonna say, can we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so finish that sentence, can we? However, can we talk about the volume of deliverable and the time that we have? 
Okay, great. So we'll pause over there. Thank you very much for finishing that, Navya. I'm going to open it up to the audience right now. All right, so I'm going to get their thoughts. I'm going to start with a question for everybody who, before you type on the chat screen, question for you, what did Navya do well in this interaction? Okay, type your responses in the chat screen. What did Navya do well in this interaction? Right. Someone said she was calm, she was polite, yes, she connected well, she listened, she was calm and composed. Awesome, Navya, it seems you've done a really good job. She was assertive, she was polite and firm, polite and composed, politely understood. Politely calm, disconnected, listen. okay, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Navya. Thank you all for your responses. So, Navya, what I'd like you to do, raise your right hand, please, turn it backwards and give yourself a pat on your back. <laughs> really good job, nicely done, all right? So a lot of people are saying you were calm, you were polite. I think definitely better than the first simulation that we had. I would agree with a lot of the comments that came in. I thought you did a great job of the four step process. I thought you were showing empathy really, really well. And I like the last question that you asked, can we look at what is the volume of the deliverables uh, that we are looking at here? How can we break down the deliverables? You're trying to get me into thinking about alternatives. And as a result, my tone of voice also changed towards you. I was still in a hurry. I was still trying to put pressure on you, but I found that I wasn't feeling like putting more pressure on you because you were trying to engage me in a collaborative space. So now, Navi, I'm going to be asking another question to our observers. Um, so the question I have for you now as observers is, can Navia have done anything differently in this interaction? So now you can type your responses in the chat screen. Can she have done anything differently? All right. So someone said that you went directly to assertiveness, could have questioned a little earlier. Yes. Uh, Thru says, could have attempted to understand why it's urgent and needed to be delivered today. Wow. We have a pretty smart audience here. Yeah. Could have understood the manager's viewpoint. Okay. Yeah. Uh, someone said, you use the words, I understand too many times. Yeah. I think we can try and reduce that. Agreed. All right, okay. And someone says, hey, you put the facts that led to a positive discussion. So they didn't have anything more to add. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you so much, thank you so much. I think I agree with a lot of what the majority is saying here. My request to you would be on similar lines. I think you empathize really well in the beginning. Um, number one, the, a deeper connect by asking the question, what is the urgency of 6 p.m. today so that you understand my context? Uh, so that you can understand what is it that's driving me to put you under pressure. That would be the key takeaway that we're looking for here before you step into the four step technique. Okay. Uh, and that will allow me to feel like I'm sharing what I said and I'll feel like you're hearing me out. Okay. So yeah, somebody else gave you another question here. What is the minimum volume that you would need? Yeah, great question, right? So some amazing collective intelligence coming through on the chat screen here. Uh, we're so privileged to have you here. Awesome. Uh, I love the way everybody is thinking about solutions here. So Navya, uh, the feedback for you has been really around, okay, yes, empathy is great. How do we then ask questions to understand the context of the other person before going into more collaborative questions? That's the feedback that we as a group had for you. Would that be okay? Yeah, Navya? sure. Yeah, good, good uh, feedback. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Well, one of the interesting points I saw on the chat screen here, Sanjeev, from Sanjeev, is on a video call, it might be even good to kind of just nod the head to, to indicate that you are listening to the other person. Ah, very nicely done, Sanjeev. That's a beautiful little point to add in there. So, Navya, I want to say thank you so much for volunteering. We have 140 plus people on this session right now and you were the first one to raise your hand, and that takes courage. So something that I absolutely want to appreciate, all right? So uh, if you guys appreciated Navia's participation, what you can do is at the bottom right uh, of your screen, you'll see an, uh, a little icon that says reactions. So you can give her a round of applause as well. Um, yeah, see, it'll appear next to your screen if you do that. So Navya, I'm giving applause, virtual applause to you as we are going. Yeah, Aniko says, congrats, absolutely. Navya, thank you so much for stepping in and helping us with that. All right, so we're coming closer to the end of this webinar. We have uh, just a little over 15 minutes remaining. 
we do want to give you some time for some time for questions and answers. And there is a special announcement we have at the end of this as well. So stay on for that. Uh, something that you guys can take back for yourselves or for your organization. Um, but before we go into all of that, I want to kind of come to what we call the puzzle of communication. Here's the puzzle, right? It's easy to talk about CQA and it's all right to do a simulation. But I am very, very mindful of what everybody is going through during these unprecedented times. What makes it even more challenging in these environments today is we are spending a lot of time in virtual environments. Um, as I'm a coach, I've been coaching people for the last three days. Um, and one of the most overwhelming responses that I'm getting is people are finding it extremely challenging because when they're doing face-to-face -face interactions, um, I can hear some background feeds. So just a gentle reminder for everybody to keep their microphones on mute. Um, thank you very much. Um, yes, Atul, we will come to questions at the end. So I've noted your question. Um, allow me to just finish this piece and we'll come back to questions. Um, when we have situations like what we are in right now, where we're working from home, where the lines between work and home are blurred, we're not having as many face-to-face -face interactions. Remember what I told you, our brain goes into the amygdala very often. Now, think about this. How do people learn, right? Studies actually show that 65% of us are visual learners, right? 65% of us are visual learners. 30% of us are auditory and only 5% are kinesthetic, meaning we learn through touching and feeling. 65%, take in that number for a moment, right? That means that there's close to about 80, 90 people just on this webinar today who are visual in nature. I mean, you just imagine what happens, right? So we definitely recommend having more video calls. But if you are on calls for five, six hours a day, some of my clients who have been speaking to tell me that they've been on calls for seven, eight hours a day. And at the end of the day, it's overwhelming. The, the ears hurt, their eyes hurt because they're looking at the screen so much. Uh, they have headaches. Um, and to top it off, everybody wants everything urgently. <laughs> so, yeah, Neville's saying I have 10 to 13 meetings per day. Neville, I empathize. Absolutely, I empathize. And we're no different, right? Uh, in our own organization, we're working extra hours just to see how we can overcome the situation. Now, add to this, add to this a situation where nobody knows what the path forward is. There's a lot of uncertainty in the environment. Even our leaders of nations don't know what to do, right? Uh, leaders of organizations don't know exactly what the next steps are. Nobody knows what's happening and every day the scenario changes. And when this happens, as human beings, we have the fear of the unknown. And we have the fear of the unknown. This is playing in our mind. And add to that, a situation where you're entering these meetings and you're not able to see people, uh, it creates an even greater fear of the unknown. And in short, that's what's triggering our amygdala people. And that's what we need to shift. We need to go into our, con into our conversations with more centering in our mindset, with that willingness to understand context. So if it means taking two or three deep breaths, um, or simply doing some rhythmic reading, right? So uh, Dr. Alan Watts actually talks about this. Uh, and there's a beautiful TED video around it um, where he says that before you enter any situation, any conversation, just do a little bit of rhythmic reading. Breathe in for four, breathe out for four counts. Just do that before you enter a conversation. That will allow you to center yourself and then go in with that mindset that I'm here to understand context. Right? Can we do this for other people? we cannot control other people, right? We, cannot, we can try and influence them, but we cannot control the others. But the one person who we can influence is the one person sitting here, right? And you chose to be on this conversation today because you wanted to learn something that you will take away. And this is what I would love for each of you to take away, right? So I'm gonna pause here and open this up for questions. Um, if you have a question, you may type that on the chat screen. Um, so, uh, yes, Pradeep has asked the question, won't a person's personality also determine the outcome of this approach? And this is, um, and that could be a deterrent to the assertive approach. Yes, uh, absolutely. 
a person's personality, their, out, their, their, their approach to a situation will absolutely determine because like anyone says, it takes two to tango, right? But as I mentioned before, can you control the other person? Not really. Will their personality lead our behavior? Right. Do we need to change our behavior to aggressive or submissive based on that? Not necessarily. That's why I would say we can be polite and firm. And if you notice what Navya did, she just kept being in that space of assertiveness, even though I was still assert aggressive. And to a certain degree, my aggressiveness came down. So thank you, Pradeep, for that question. Um, uh, a little earlier, we had a question, I think, um, I said I will come back to, how do you deal uh, with negative personalities? Um, yes, uh, similar to what Pradeep asked, if someone is in that negative space, remember, what you want to do is try and trigger their neocortex, right? If you trigger their neocortex, that's the only way the empathy center of their brain comes back in, right? And if you'd like more information, we actually do more detailed sessions around this. How do you ask questions? The nature of questions that actually help with this. So that requires a little bit more time. And we, if we have a more detailed session, we can actually do this. We normally have like breakout groups um, where we put people into smaller groups, get them to brainstorm, think about questions that they can ask that trigger people's empathy centers. Right? And that would be a great conversation to have. Given the time and given that we are 140 here, doing breakout groups is not the best option right now. So I will defer for that question. If you have uh, maybe a longer session later, we can go into that. Um, Neville asks, how do we understand body language virtually? Yes, somebody asked a similar question earlier. Uh, when in virtual set settings, especially if you don't have the video, but uh, the only thing you get to listen to is audio. So uh, Neville, um, I'll give you what I do, right? Um, I'll give you what I do. Uh, so I come from the background of working in the contact center industry, a call center industry, right? And this was, I had a little bit of what we call cognitive dissonance in the beginning because my job required me to speak to people over the telephone and either provide customer service or sometimes even sell things to them. And I found it extremely, extremely challenging in the beginning because I couldn't see people. And I'm, a very, I'm very much a visual learner. I was in that 65% category. So it took a huge mindset shift for me. And I'll tell you that one of my team leaders gave me this little tip that I use that helped me, and I'm gonna share it with you, is that when you are in a virtual setting where you cannot see the video of the other person, what I would recommend you do is actually just close your eyes and imagine that person. Listen to the tone of voice. So if I was listening to Navya, I might try to imagine, hmm, sounds like a lady, uh, sounds hmm, like she might be in this age category, right? And I try and imagine a face to this individual. So if she had not turned on her video, that's probably what I would have done. And even as I'm answering this question, uh, for some of you whose faces I don't completely remember, um, I'm just visualizing, ha, huh, this sounds like a male name. It's probably what the person looks like. And so I think of a point, usually where my um, webcam is on my laptop, and I... I Think of that point as where the person is sitting and I talk to that person, right? That's, that's kind of what I do. And it takes a little bit of practice, but over time you get the hang of it. The tricky part is when the voice is not entirely male or female and you're kind of wondering, uh oh, what this is. Uh, and the name is not the best indicator. Either. Those are the tricky ones, but I'll let you figure that out for yourself. But imagine that person in front of you and you will notice that your body language shifts and you're able to kind of imagine the body language of the person, right? Um, yeah, thank you, Neville. Yeah, you got a visual simulation of the other person. Right, uh, we're coming close to the end. Um, I'm just gonna kind of review to see if there's any other questions. Um, yeah, Shivani says that she would review the quantum of work and come back to that person. So buying some time, Shivani, is what you're saying. Yes, that's another option as well. So not to buckle under that pressure, but really get extra time. Yeah, so that's another option as well. Um, Luke, did I miss any questions here? Because when I was busy answering it, I didn't really. I think yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, I think there was one more that I noticed. I think uh, someone asked, uh, can you give us an example of an empathy question, right? Roxanne, I think, asked that question, right? Yes, okay, wondering. yeah, so that'll, that'll be the last question I take before we go into the final segment. Uh, so yes, I certainly can give you um, an example of an empathy question, right? Um, so here's what I would do if I was in that scenario. 
Uh, so I'm talking from the perspective of department B. I would tell, tell Luke, hey, Luke, I know you guys are working on multiple priorities right now. So how can I support you to help prioritize my work? How can I support you to help you prioritize my work? That's an example of an empathy question where you put the other person first. You're saying, how can I support you? For me, that would be an example of an empathy question that you could use. So very good question, Roxanne, right? And as I said before, if we had more time um, in real time scenarios, we could get into more details where we get into breakout groups as well and do this. So uh, thank you so much for the questions. I will apologize if we've not been able to take some of the questions uh, right straight away right now because we wanted to make this really time limited. Normally when we do this for organizations, our webinars are about two hours, but we just wanted to give you a sh quick short session because we understand in virtual settings, staying connected for long periods of time is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, but as I said, if you're staying on till the end, we do have some special announcements, uh, uh, three of them in fact. One of them uh, will be something that we're offering. But what we do as an organization, uh, some of you are already our clients, we are doing a lot of virtual training right now, uh, moving most of our sessions online, uh, simply because not only about the lockdown, but in the foreseeable future, we're going to be having situations where we may not have face-to-face -face groups come together so often. Keeping that in mind, short sessions, two hours, maybe one or two sessions a day on leadership, communication, presentation. We also are doing individual coaching. Uh, the last three days, that's what I've been doing, coaching a lot of people individually um, in, in, in terms of how they can improve performance, improve productivity. Um, now, uh, here's something special that we're actually giving out. During these challenging times, uh, we understand that a lot of people are going through pressure, uh, be it at work, be it at home. A lot of leaders are having to make some incredibly hard decisions under duress, under pressure. So for these leaders, for these entrepreneurs, we're offering, uh, and so when I say we, I'm talking about our chief mentor, Pramila, who has about 25 plus years of experience, and I, uh, who, who I'm, an, I'm an executive coach, I have about 17 years of experience as a facilitator, and over 11 years as a coach, and we are offering free one-hour consultations with leaders with the intention of enabling them to develop perspectives that will help them stay centered through these turbulent times. Okay, so if you know a leader um, in your organization who would benefit from this, please let them know. We'll put this out on our social media handles as well. Do follow us, and we'll put this information out so that you can have it. If you are a leader yourself and are facing a challenging time, then you can approach us and we will schedule uh, a one-on-one, -on -one, one-hour session. This is from us to you. No questions asked, no payment necessary. This is our way of giving back to a community of people who are right now in a situation that we've not been in before. Okay, so this is something we're offering and if that's of interest to you, do reach out to us uh, you can contact us on the following numbers. So Luke, you can share with them the contact information as well by the end of this conversation. Um, if you like, I see a lot of comments coming from you on the chat screens. Thank you so much, everybody. It was such a pleasure having you all here. A lot of these names I'm seeing here are familiar, familiar names. It's so kind of you to come in. Lots of gratitude uh, from us at MMM Training Solutions to you. And if you would like to share some feedback with us, uh, there's a way we can do it. Luke, I'm going to hand back to you for that. Take Thank over, you so yeah. much, Vikas. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah. I'd like for you to just take a, a couple of minutes to stay back. Um, your uh, reviews are important to us. Your feedback is important to us. I'm just going to quickly stop sharing for just one moment, and I'm going to show you how you can share your feedback with us. So um, one way of you being able to do this is to go online, um, go open up a Google search screen. I'm going to share that video with you right now and type in MMM training solutions, or you can either type in uh, triple MTS either works and in the results page, um, you're going to have to submit a review. So let me go ahead and quickly share my screen where you can see what I'm talking about and how you can go ahead and submit a review. So, um, yeah. So 
type in MMM training solutions and in the results page, you're gonna see MMM training solutions here and here under reviews, click, go ahead, submit a review. Tell us what you felt about this session. Um, you can contact us in all of the other ways that we actually shared that you could contact us with. Again, it was such a pleasure um, hosting this with you. Um, we're gonna be putting out a lot more um, in the weeks to come. We will keep you informed. Um, we're gonna do a hard stop right now. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It was a pleasure working with you. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.